It's Tony Blair's most widely beneficial political blunder. And 100% public funding demands 100% transparency. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Jane, Jane, Jane Roberts next. Jane Roberts. With President Sarkozy seeking to ban the wearing of the burqa in France, does the panel think that our government should seek a similar action in our country? Yeah, we have quite a lot of questions about the burqa in France and whether we should do the same here. Leon Wood. I think it's ridiculous. Um, would we ban nuns' habits? I, I don't think this is a religious question, actually. I think it's a, a, a racial question. Sarkozy says um, it's, he's doing it because he's concerned about questions of um, the oppression of uh, women and women's rights. Well, why not then legislate to force the uh, Catholic Church to accept women priests? Many different institutions within our society uh, oppress women and, and the empowerment of women is the answer, I think. So the state forcing women uh, not to wear the burqa is as ridiculous as uh, a state forcing women to wear a burqa. Okay. <laughs> the, um... If you're watching at home, you may hear the odd seagull. You mustn't take this, what the seagull says as any indication of <laughs> approval or disapproval of what the panel is saying. They're just seagulls around the roof here who intervene. What, uh, what uh, Sarkozy actually said was, we can't accept women prisoners behind a screen, cut off from all social life, deprived of all identity. Kelvin McKenzie, do you think uh, this government should take similar well, action? I, I about two, <clears throat> three, four years ago, I was um, holidaying in Barbados on the west coast and the most ridiculous thing I think I had ever seen in my life was four Muslim women dressed head to toe in, in their burqa I think it is, I think it's the burqa, swimming in the, in, 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 the, uh, in the sea, right, literally within about 20 or 30 yards of me. It was a preposterous and very strange moment I felt and what I like about Sarkozy and what he says is that he is raising a flag of uh, a difficult subject and he's raising it and saying and, and raising it from the point of the women's slavery remember the Muslim religion uh, is is basically a male based religion in which women have a two steps behind um, uh, uh, role and he is saying that it's a form of slavery and that these women are barred from having a, a proper role in the world because they are, are literally, they have a black sack over them. And to my mind, it's a black sack over them. It's exactly what it is. Well, what else is it? And so I am saying, I think we should have this debate. And what I'd be interested to know is which politician would actually raise that issue, right, in this country? And what's interesting... <laughs> wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. There isn't a parapet alive that David Cameron wouldn't duck behind on this issue. And Clegg, I'm sure, hasn't got a view Jack, one way Jack, or the other. Jack Straw, you remember. <laughs> Jack Straw did yes. say it was a visible statement of separation and difference. And you have a Liberal MEP, yes? Yep. Chris Davies, who says, I believe it doesn't belong in the yep. 21st century. And I don't, I don't agree with him. And I'd also you don't agree with I, him. I wouldn't fancy Jack seeing Straw. Kelvin in his swimming trunks in Barcelona <laughs> either. <laughs> 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 An attractive scientist. <laughs> I get quite a few compliments. Julia Goldsworthy, please. <laughs> I, I think um, there is an issue about whether um, whether women have the freedom to choose whether or not they wear it, and I think that is a legitimate concern. Mm. But if we start with well, banning... sorry, let's just deal with so, that. How so, do you mean if they so have the freedom to choose? It may well be that some women have made the decision that they would like to wear yeah. the burqa. And how do you and distinguish? Others, perhaps, well, we can't. We mm. can't. So why is but is curtailing their liberties going to help achieve help them achieve more liberty. I don't see, it's, it's a circular argument. And I think the problem is, if you start with a burqa, where do you stop? You know, literally, are we going to end up with a fashion police deciding what we should and shouldn't wear? If we, you know, do, you, do we say that we don't like hoodies or that we think some of those really shiny leggings aren't very nice? You know, when do you stop making judgments about what people can and can't okay. choose to wear? There are a lot of men with their hands up, but no, no oh, there's a woman with her hand up. Yes, I come to you. Yes. Um, I lived abroad in Germany for 15 years in Bavaria with a very high Turkish population. 
and I w worked in the social sector with many Turkish women who wore the full burqa and they chose to of their own free will. I also knew European women who married Muslim men who also chose to wear the burqa. In fact, actually a Welsh lady who also lived out in Munich. Um, and so I don't think that it's correct that we should choose for them. Okay, and, and the woman in pink one. Yeah. Apart from the moral point of view as to whether they can choose or not choose to wear the burqa, there's also things like security. A young man can't go in a petrol station with his helmet on. He has to remove it before he even enters. I don't understand how they can be identified anywhere wearing the full burqa. So you think people on the street, so to speak, should be identifiable at any yes, rate? Yes, I do. Jim Knight? In the end, I don't think the government should stick its nose in and tell people what they should and shouldn't wear. Right. That isn't the issue. That is not the issue, Jim. Uh, in the end, that's what I think. I mean, I, as schools minister for three years, I had to deal with this issue a little uh, around whether or not teachers, teaching assistants, um, other school staff uh, should be uh, allowed to wear the burqa or, or to wear the veil. And I took a view then, and it's a view that obviously I would stick to, um, that if it interferes in your ability to do the job, then you shouldn't. And so I, I didn't think it was appropriate for people who are teaching, and communication's a key part of teaching, uh, to have their, have their mouth obscured. Um, uh, and, and that was the nature of the guidance that I think we put out in the end. Um, but, you know, if people choose to wear a burqa of their own free will, then let them get on with it. I understand that, but I, could I just yeah. add that from a security point of view, you don't think the government should interfere? Um, I, there are, uh, that was my main... Yeah, no, I understand the point that you make. And, uh, you know, the, there have been times in, in airports when uh, the, the same thought has gone.